everyone, this is Sharo, and um, in this episode, I'm going to be diving deeper on what you can expect from your Microsoft Class Notebook. So let's go ahead and get started. So you can see here I am in the notebook called Sixth Grade Mathematics Class First Period. In my um, previous episode, I showed you how to create your notebook. So now this is just a continuation on what you can actually see or view in a class notebook. So on the left hand side where my cursor is at, uh, these, uh, this column right here is called your sections, right? So in your sections, you have here your welcome page, your collaboration space. So as I click on my collaboration space, a drop down uh, shows up and this is pretty much where you can have uh, your students and yourself and your uh, co-teachers work on uh, sharing um, ideas, brainstorming, um, even uh, sharing some resources, right? Sharing resources all together in this particular space. Um, this middle section right here is called your page uh, column right here. So if I click on another page, I just simply do that and I can, let's say, name this as my brainstorming page. So um, if my students are present at the moment, or even if I'm offline, they can go back into this notebook and they can just start typing away an idea. So they can uh, use the different uh, fonts here, uh, also the different font size, um, also the formatting tools like bold, italic, and underline. Uh, they can use highlighting tools. They can change the text color. Um, there's also your uh, clear formatting. Uh, and also other type of font formatting that they can use. Uh, students can also uh, use bullets if they want to, or numbering, uh, if they want to organize and jot down their ideas as they're brainstorming. Uh, you also have here your margins, so you can align left, center, or right. Um, you can also do some indentations and even paragraph spacing and also uh, paragraph spacing options. Uh, you also have different styles. So if you are an ELAR teacher and you want them to practice on different styles of uh, such as heading, uh, title, citation, quotes, etc., then they can uh, make use of what is available here. Um, also, I like this uh, particular feature here in the home menu. You have your tags. So tags are great when you want just to highlight or for them to have uh, to focus their attention on a particular portion of your notebook or in your page. Um, so if you want it to be a critical information, you can simply click on that symbol and right away that tag is added there and you can have them say, please read chapter uh, uh, one uh, from pages one to five uh, for your uh, homework. So when they see that, um, you know, again, you can change the font, make it a little bit bigger so they can see it right away. You can also change that into red. So that right away gets highlighted. But again, this is a collaboration space. So uh, students can use the tags to express uh, ideas as well or what are some to do's that they would like to do. Um, also, a neat thing would be your spell checkers. And you can also set the language for your spell uh, checker. So if you are, if your native uh, language is not English and you want to use another language as because that is, let's say you have a different, um, you know, uh, native, uh, native language, then you can choose from the languages available and the spell checker will acknowledge that based on the language that you're using. You also have your dictation um, tool here so you can dictate. Uh, using uh, the different languages that is available. So if you know Chinese, you can dictate notes in Chinese, or if you are, if you know German, you can also dictate notes in German and so on and so forth. Okay, so those are some of the neat features under the, under the home menu in your uh, class notebook. So one thing what I like about the collaboration space, like what I said, you can um, create different shapes so you can uh, use different um, tools in here. You can draw, 
So you can draw like an idea, you can draw a circle, right? And draw out um, different, uh, branching off different brainstorming tools or brainstorming ideas, like what I'm showing right here. So you can see that. So students can draw their, um, can draw uh, pictures, images. Um, they can also um, use the drawing tool to write, to write instead of typing. So just different ways for you to use the collaboration space, okay? And of course, you also have your different editing tools and also have your uh, math tools in the draw menu. Um, in insert, in the collaboration space, and also these, all of these different tools that I'm showing you, you can apply that as well in uh, different pages of, of the class notebook. It's not necessarily just available in the collaboration space, but it's just so that we are in a collaboration space that I'm showing you all these tools. But these different features can be applied in your content library as well. You have that section right there and you have this particular space. I can simply add a page in here. And in this page, I can um, go back and type in here as part of my content library, let's say my um, um, for, uh, handouts, right? So if I have handouts, I can insert, uh, I can choose a file, insert as an attachment, and I can choose a file from my computer, and I can pull a file whatsoever and add it in, okay? So there are just different, um, you know, ways for you to be able to share, uh, to share, um, you know, your uh, materials and resources to your students. So if I want to attach this PDF on virtual norms, for example, for my kids, I can go ahead and do that, open that up. And now that file I can insert and just wait for the system to load it. And um, in, in a few minutes, it will be available. And so in remember, your content library is a place where your uh, students can just download. They can download what you place there. They can copy and paste it, but they cannot edit it. So that's what I like about the content library space. Uh, earlier, we were in the collaboration space, so that's when you and your students can work together, uh, draw ideas, um, brainstorm ideas, and even kids amongst themselves, they can brainstorm as well in that uh, collaboration space. So now I have that particular file available. They cannot edit that, but they can make a copy and download it and save it in their laptop or add it into their uh, in their own notebook. So Carolyn, Keena, or Lorena can copy, right? Right click and copy that and place it in their notebook. So going back to the collaboration space, um, you can keep on adding different pages here as I click on plus page. So another cool idea would be if I have different groups in my first period, so I can have group one, this is team red, and I'll, I'll, I'll add another one. For this, I'm going to put group two, and this is going to be team green. And let me add another one right here. I'm going to have group three, team blue, and another group. It will be group four, team yellow. And let's add another one. So I'm going to add another page, um, name that, go to the untitled page, and then name it as group five, team orange. There you go. So now all the students, instead of just going onto the general brainstorming page where everybody can, you know, go crazy uh, editing and adding their ideas in here, you can assign them. And again, this is just one period. So in my first period, if I have 40 kids and I divide them into five, then, you know, guess how many kids I can have in each group, right? So if I have um, eight kids in each group, if that's too big, make it smaller. And that means you'll have to add more uh, students, you know, I mean, more groups in, in, uh, in the form of pages. So add more groups so that you can break it down to smaller groups of students. So each group of kids, they can go into their team. So I will assign them to what team they're going to be, whether they're going to be in team red, team green, blue, yellow, or orange. And they can brainstorm away in there based on whatever assignment I would like to give them. 
Now, another thing too, under the collaboration space, and the same thing goes with your content uh, library, uh, you don't have to stick with just whatever available section is there. So this is the section right here. It's called using the collaboration or getting started with a collaboration space, right? So I can add another section and I can make this as my um, day two collaboration space, okay? So if I click OK on that one, now I have my day two. So here I can right away add pages. So I can put group one again, team red, right? Same way, add another page. Uh, I'll call it group two, team green, okay? And I can uh, keep on adding as many groups as I want, depending on on how many uh, students, again, I have in my class. If I have a lot of kids, best practice would be to divide them. Uh, divide them in smaller groups so that all the students will have an opportunity uh, to really uh, be part of it to actively participate in the groups you don't want them to get lost because of the numbers right so that's also a way of holding your kids responsible uh, with the assignments or tasks or roles that they have in the group so i'm just showing you that you are not limited to the pages or to the sections rather that is already given to you under the collaboration space and the same with the content library you can add sections there so this can be um, instead of uh, my library resources, this is an example, under my, um, so I can drag that actually and put it right here. Let me just remove that. I can delete that section, not a problem, permanently delete it by doing a right click. But under content library, I think I can, I can only work out with what I have right here, okay? So under the teacher only, this particular section, pretty much what Microsoft tells us here, their idea would be uh, for curriculum planning, activities that, that are being staged before moving into the content library. So any pre-work or pre-designing that you do, you can use the teacher only uh, section and use this page or add more pages if you wish, right? Um, so this can be lesson planning, right? Week one, okay? And then we can keep on um, doing that by week, planning week two, okay? So it's up to you and your co-teachers uh, how you want to collaborate and work together and so that you can do all the pre-work before moving them into your content library, okay? And so you can see here also in Carolyn's notebook, we'll just use that as an example. So as I zoom in, you can see here all the different sections under Carolyn. So you have resources, assessments, and of course, they're all blank right now. Nothing is in there. So this is where your students will start typing in using all these sections to create their digital notebook. So if they're doing uh, journal writing, well, guess what? There's that section right there that they can uh, do their journal writing. Now, if you're an ELAR teacher, you don't want to use the sections uh, of resources, assessment, class notes, and assignments, you just want it to be all pure journal writing, then you can go ahead and do that. You can do journal writing one, journal writing two, three, and four, and so on, based on how you want uh, the class, uh, the notebooks of your students to look like when you, um, or how they should look uh, when you create uh, the class notebook. So it, again, it's very flexible. Um, also, there's always ways for you to be able to add or push out uh, more pages or more notebooks uh, to your students. Even though they've already been set up, you can still add more there later on. So I'm going to um, show you next time um, how you can use the Immersive Reader. So that's going to be in my next episode. So I'm going back here to my welcome page uh, right on top. And uh, that will be in my next episode. So for now, that was just a quick overview as to what you can uh, expect and what you have in terms of features in your class notebook according to the different sections and pages of your notebook. Thank you for watching.